Hello, I'm Bruce Schulte, and these are my co-authors on this talk on facilitating cohabitation of humans and elephants through a conservation behavior approach. Human-wildlife conflict is becoming a global conservation issue caused by human populations expanding, use of habitat conflicting with wildlife, and leading to competition for resources. Human-elephant conflict is specific in that crop breeding has become a major component of the conflict leading humans to try to defend their crops and a call for conservation approaches. Imparting a conservation behavior approach, we can use uh, relevant principles such as a cost-benefit approach to try to raise the value of natural areas, lower the value of crops to wildlife, and raise the cost of crop breeding, such as through the use of deterrent fences. Evaluating the benefits and costs, benefits are achieved by nutrition to both elephants and humans, potential income to humans, cost to humans by trying to grow and protect their crops, and cost to both humans and elephants in trying to obtain the crops. Our understanding of the elephant senses and behavior help us in trying to construct means to uh, protect the crops and reduce the conflict. We formed a consortium known as Elephants and Sustainable Agriculture in Kenya through a variety of partners, and I'll talk about some of them. One is Earth Watch Institute, and this is a citizen scientist that they bring to our study. The IPCC, in a broader uh, view of this issue, considers climate change as this uh, caused by deforestation as the second uh, largest contributor to climate change. And so, what happens here is that by losing uh, global forests and, and other areas that sequester carbon, um, we lead to greater greenhouse gas accumulation in the atmosphere, as well as a reduction in ecological services. REDD Plus is an economic response to this problem by reducing emissions and deforest degradation in developing countries. And Wildlife Works is a private company that has used REDD as an approach in a market-based way uh, to try to help conservation. And you may have heard of a recent partnership with Hartree Partners um, for a 30-year involvement in this process. So this is uh, very good news. Our involvement with Wildlife Works has been through the Casado Gao Corridor REDD Plus project. This is located in the corridor between Savo East and West National Parks, where there are some 12,000 elephants and 100,000 people, and some 62% of the conflicts over the last 20 plus years has been between humans and elephants. Crop rating can destroy a subsistent farmer's crops in a single night, uh, reducing both their nutrition and their income. Traditional means of reducing crop rating are shown here, and they've often been practical and affordable, but rarely are they resistant to being overcome by elephants. Thus, modern ways have tried to figure out how to keep elephants from crop rating by using beehive fences, by using chili peppers as a deterrent, and our group has come up with a metal strip fence deterrent. Our group is also trying to improve food security through climate smart agricultural practices. Uh, one of the issues with this is that it can raise the value of crops not only to humans, but also to elephants. So our objectives are experimental testing of deterrent fence types, trying to enhance food security through CSA practices, and involving the communities in this decision-making and evaluation processes of uh, parts one and two listed above there. So we've tested a variety of deterrent fences over the last four years in both single and combinations. We've built fences by help with our Earthwatch Institute volunteers, as well as our own team members. This picture up here shows wild lands on the bottom and the farms up above, and then our experimental areas are on the boundary there. We monitor crop rating by looking at the rating potential by the number of elephants in the area, the rating success, and the degree of damage that they do. I'll just show a little bit of data here. 
So far, we've shown that when we do double fences compared to single fences, the double fences are better at keeping elephants from approaching closely to the fences. We call that with it close within six meters. However, they're both equally good at preventing elephants from actually entering the fences. Elephants do so at about a 30% rate, um, but there's no difference between the two types of fences once the elephants actually get close. So we're continuing to test both single and double fences to see how the overall success is compared to the yield that farmers get from their uh, fields. We're also trying to improve secu food security through a variety of CSA techniques, such as these are called Zy pits and that help retain water and looking at the growth in that area versus areas not using such pits, and also by helping them have more secure water resources for both their schools and their communities. We're doing a variety of community outreach and providing and obtaining input from the community members. Uh, some of this is the work of Lynn Von Hagen's uh, doctoral work. <clears throat> so here we have some data on uh, responses to surveys to date. We've seen that 54% of the farmers surveyed do use some type of uh, method to prevent crops and fences are the most likely one for them to use. Uh, they do not, when they do not use some form of deterrent, it's because they lack the resources. So cost effectiveness is extremely critical to these people. Um, they are very afraid to somewhat afraid of elephants overall. So the fear of elephants is really uh, a big concern to them. And in general, they have not heard a great deal about alternative or CSA practices to help them improve their crop yield. So information input is important. They are quite willing to implement these practices once they learn how to do so. So in our study uh, to date, we are trying to use a conservation behavior approach to build community resilience and to aid in elephant conservation. Thank you very much for your time. Lots of partners to acknowledge. And uh, if you'd like more information, feel free to contact me or go to our websites or go to the Earthwatch website for more information on our program there. Thank you very much.